Yo, what's up? This is Pixel Husser. So check this out. This is the ultimate interactivity kit from Mona. This is basically a compilation of all the different modules and things that we've covered and created over the last few workshops um, that we've had. So no one has any excuse for not having interactivity in their worlds because it's literally as simple as just drag and drop, no code, do a little customizations if you like. But if you want to take it a step further and you really want to get you know, uh, understand it and be able to create completely custom things of your own, then these are the modules to look for. So let's take a tour of all this stuff. So right now we've got the reactor interaction, visual scripting interaction examples. So this is if you want to take it a step further or you just want to do this basic kind of you enter an object, step on an object, whatever, and it instigates an animation, this is it. So here's the Mona reactor version. The Mona reactor is a great, simple, easy to use tool that you can use on any Mona project to create these sorts of interactions and get a little bit more advanced and complex as is noted in some of the modules here. But as you can see, I step on that object, the animation triggers. And this is basically a visual scripting alternative version. With the visual scripting, you have complete and total freedom to utilize or incorporate all kinds of other visual scripting to really get funky and custom with it. But those are the two modules that if you really wanna learn and understand or just wanna do a simple basic interaction like that, that's the one you're going to want to go with. So now we've got a cutscene, which is a really great effect that uh, people create in their worlds to add a little bit of drama. So for example, the little orange ball, uh, yellow ball there, that's basically representative of where our camera is at. And the translucent semi opaque um, area here is basically where the camera gets triggered. So as you can see, there are endless possibilities of what you can do with that to create create little cutscenes within your worlds and spaces. So moving along, we've got a basic checkpoint, which is again, a very simple basic interaction, just like we just noted in the beginning. And you step on something and something appears or disappears. So you can use that. It's called an achievement module. You can use that also for creating, for example, an inventory system. So let's say that this was an object, let's say a gold coin. Um, and the user touches it, you can make it so that that disappears, but then a gold coin appears in the player's inventory. Maybe that's on the HUD or something like that, but you can imagine all kinds of possibilities for creating achievements, checkpoints, and things like that. So now we've got the locks and puzzles. So basically, just as it says, we've got a few keypad locks in order to get into spaces. So for example, the code is one, two, three. So you look at the button, you press, E to press it. We've got sliding doors. We've got a single swinging door over there. And then we've got another double swinging door over here, or I should say sliding door. And then similarly, we've got sort of puzzles in order to unlock or open doors or whatever you can imagine to do with this. And this works in the sense that you look at the different cubes and you press the E button to interact. And we're gonna go ahead and turn those so that it's one, two, three, and you can see the door opens. Of course, those can be symbols and these are constructed in a way that it's very easy for you to go in there and change. Like maybe instead of a box, it's a boulder with some kind of stone statue that you have to turn that has different symbols on different sides. So now we've got the super jump power up again, the semi opaque, semi opacity uh, boxes are just representative of the area where the super jump is, is going to happen. So I collect the power up and now I've got the super jump and the super jump using the reactor that we mentioned earlier, uh, basically allows you to add like a blur motion effect and things like that and um, tweak the chromatic effect to make it so that you can see that the user actually has the power up is engaged. Look how cool the rainbow effect on the sneakers are. <laughs> oh man, I wish that was part of it. Anyway, so I move out of the area and it disengages the super jump power up. So now similarly, we've got the super run power up and this time the effect is gonna work while we're on top of this area here. So I'm just walking right here but you can see it actually acts as a run. So if I actually run, it should be quite quick. And again, once we leave that area, it disengages. Now here's a fun one. This is the random skybox and audio module. It'll actually create a different background audio or and um, skybox each time you enter the space 
or in this instance, we've created an actual button that you can use to trigger it. So if I hop, you can see it changes the skybox and the background audio. I'll stick with this one for now. So now we've got the uh, pendulum trap. And what you can do here is you can basically step on this area here. That's basically being used. That's actually the respawn module. This little box up here is where I am is just the spawn point. Uh, so you can test that by stepping on that area on the floor to trigger the respawn so that you spawn where the spawn point is and you can test it out. And this is obviously just a sort of obstacle for um, an obstacle course kind of game or whatever you like. Uh, same principle, we're using the respawn point for this moving platform. Oh, this one's a tricky one. And then we've got our lunge spikes, our lunge trap with spikes that jolt out of these boxes. Oh, oh shoot. Oh, anyway. Oh, I got to get out of here. <laughs> All right, and here's our respawn module that you just saw a few use cases for. You just basically step on the area. You can put the spawn point wherever you need it to be, and ta-da, there you go. Now, here's one of my absolute favorites. Basically, our projectile and scoring module, you hit zero, or you can modify that in the um, module's inspector window with the different settings. And you can modify quite a few things, quite a few features and parameters there, like whether or not the object disappears when you hit it. So, for example, the floor does not have um, what's necessary to make it so that it acts as a target. So the items actually bounce off of it. See that? The projectiles, the bullets, the lasers, whatever. And you can see it's keeping score as well as keeping track of how many shots were fired, how many hits and how many misses. Now, it excluded the misses that went on the floor uh, because I didn't set it up that way, but you get the general idea. Now, here we have the wonderful ti timer that was – I mean, you you really have to look under the hood to really appreciate this timer that Met the Empire created utilizing the reactor, which is absolutely phenomenal. So here we've created a start gate that works in conjunction with the timer. It doesn't have to. Basically, you step on the little trigger there, it counts down from three to one, the timer has started, and then once I hit this end area, it stops. Now, I do want to note back there the locks and puzzles, the spinning ones with the cubes, the puzzle lock, that's actually inspired by this brilliant puzzle that um, Tom Moore had created in his world, Olympus. Do a search for that on Mona and be sure to check that out. It's pretty freaking awesome. Now, these are just blocks. These came from the RetroWave Obstacle Course workshop that we had. You can just utilize those if you want to create an obstacle course. Here we just have another example of a checkpoint. Nice basic trigger utilizing the achievement module. Again, you can utilize that for like inventory or keeping track of things that the player has accomplished and things like that. And here's the anti-gravity, amazing, awesome, freaking fun little toy that also I used. Uh, this is repurposing Matt the Empire's fans and stuff that uh, he has an amazing playground that cre he created for Mona that also has a plethora of tutorial stuff and interactive stuff that you really should check out. So there you go. Between this and the playground, no one has any excuse to not start implementing interactivity into your worlds. And if you want to customize it, take it a step further. You're just going to have to dive in and take that leap, get over that small hump of the intimidation factor, because I promise you, once you take that little step, you're going to see it's actually relatively easy. Everything is based on some very basic interaction principles, and you'll be able to build on that to create whatever you want. Okay, now, so utilizing the kit is real simple. You're either going to open up the Ultimate Interactivity Kit project file for Unity. In that case, you're going to have this entire world that I just showed you that you can go ahead and play around with. You can hit Playground, and you can test it, walk around it, play with the things. 
And you can just go ahead and repurpose all this stuff, utilize the elements, move them around, add in your stuff, and create your own world with all the interactivity you need. Or you're going to import the package itself into your own space, in which case you're going to have to go to the Mona library inside of the projects tab. And if you do so, you're going to see a kits folder and a VS folder for visual scripting. And within those are folders for all the different elements that were created over the span of our workshop. So you've got the projectile module with the projectile module prefab that you can drag and drop in there. And then you've got the retrowave obstacle course and the puzzles and locks with all their respective elements in there as well that you can just go ahead and drag and drop. So now... If you look in the, or if you drag and drop elements, in this case, we have the project file opened up. So we have all the elements in there already. You see the different prefabs for the retrowave obstacle course, locks and puzzles, and the projectile module. And of course, within them are all the different elements. So if you click on one of them, for example, the super jump power up, you're going to see on the right hand side in the inspector, you're going to see the Mona window with the workshop video link, module tutorial video, and the Mona Playground. So the Mona Playground is the wonderful space that the Matt Empire had created with all sorts of other tutorials and interactive items and whatever. Highly recommended you check that out. And um, the module tutorial video is obviously a video for this specific module. Now, some of them have just the workshop because the workshop included the tutorial for that. Um, so you can watch the workshop video as well. So anyway, that's the bottom line. You just want to get in here, start drag and dropping. If you need to learn how to utilize them, just go ahead and click on them. Look in the inspector. There might be some parameters like a, the instance of the random skybox and audio module. And there'll also be some videos for further educating yourself on how to utilize this stuff. Or go ahead and click on the Mona Playground to collect a bunch more elements that you can bring into your space and educate yourself. Take care. Enjoy.